Yo, 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 it's your boy JTG, aka the flyest man in sports entertainment, and you are about to watch my career interview, my shoot interview on the Hannibal TV. Chill. All right, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Uh, were you always a fan of pro wrestling growing up? Yes, uh, both my parents were big fans of wrestling. Um, they both used to go to Madison Square Garden together. <laughs> so it was only fitting that I grew up watching it. I, I knew since the age of two that I wanted to be a professional wrestler. And when you started training in wrestling, I heard that you went right into OVW. Um, what made you join uh, the development territory right away? Um, after high school, I, I went to, um, I didn't jump right into OVW first. I went to Charlotte and I trained with a, with a, um, with a trainer called, his name was Gene Legan. He had some experience on, in WCW and, um, and on the indie circuit. I was trained with him for about six months and then I got wind of OVW through, um, what was the NXT, not the NXT guy, I'm sorry. What was, it, what was the name of that show on MTV? Oh, tough enough. Tough enough. Yeah, he was telling me that he was going down to OVW. He said that was the place to be. And then I remember going to, was it Survivor Series? And I spoke to Rico. Um, and he said he trained in OVW. To me, that was a sign. <laughs> so uh, I went to OVW right away after getting those two signs. I think it was the third one, but I can't remember right now. What was the travel like uh, commuting from New York to uh, Louisville when you started doing it? Oh, it was crazy. At first, my job didn't allow me to do it because at first I was working at the movie theater. And training was on a weekend, and that's when movies come out Friday, Saturday. Those were the biggest days. So um, they said we can't get you, we can't let you off on the weekend because that's favoritism. Everybody wants to be off on the weekend. I'm like, I'm pursuing this. If I can't, you know, this is my priority. So if you don't allow me, I'm just gonna have to quit. They was like, all right, we'll support you, and they let, they allowed me to leave and um, keep my job. <laughs> <laughs> so back then, it's not like now where it's only developmental contracted wrestlers in the development system. There was also wrestlers who were paying to uh, train in the development system. Yeah. Um, how did that process start? Did you jump right in with the development guys that were in the contract, or was there something before? No, definitely a process. I went through every stage possible. I started from the from the very bottom. There was an OVW. They had um, beginners class. They call that the amateur class. Then they had the intermediate class, and then they had the um, TV class. They call that the contract class. And for me, you know, I had no connections or no insides. You know, I didn't have anybody related related to me that was in the company. So I had to start from the very bottom, and I worked my way through the beginners class, the, uh, the amateur class, intermediate class, and then I finally um, got to the contract class where I was able to train with WWE devent developmentals, and that's where that's where you wanted to be. Who was the trainer in the beginner's class then? Um, there was various trainers in the beginner's class. I remember uh, Mike Mondo from the Spirit Squad. Mikey, he was one of my trainers um, at first. And then eventually it was um, Rip Rogers, who was a great trainer. He, he, he influenced me a lot, gave me a lot of confidence in the ring, helped with promos and also taught uh, backstage etiquette, which is very important in making it in this business, which I talked about in my book, uh, Damn Why I Write This Book Too, How to Play the Game. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about where people can get that. We actually have two books now, so... Two, but yeah. You want to tell us the names of them now, just for people that might not, by some chance, watch till the end of this video? Okay, so the... So the name of the first book is called Damn, Why Did I Write This Book? Which was the play off a tweet that I did that got, when I got released, which got thousands of retweets and favorites. Um, that book is pr uh, primarily, I'm talking about heat, which a lot of people don't really talk about or know about. And heat is something like a black cloud that follows a professional wrestler throughout their career when they get into an altercation with another professional wrestler or with the office. And it's kind of like cooties for grown ass men. <laughs> And then the second book is called Damn Why Did I Write This Book Too? And that's about how to play the game and um, politicking and how to advance your way to the top. If you're a professional If you're a professional wrestler. wrestler. That'd be very important to know. Well, you can use it in, in, in Hollywood. You can use it in a lot of industries. <laughs> yeah, that probably would have benefited me had I read that <laughs> a long time ago. Um, so was Jim Cornette around in OVW when you were there? Jim Corner was there for for um, for majority of the time that I was there, and then he had that incident with um, Santino. That uh, I don't know if you heard about that incident that he had with Santino, where um, Santino was supposed to um, the Boogeyman was was down in OVW, and there was an incident on TV where Santino laughed at the Boogeyman, 
at the time Santino was still green to the business, was still new, and he didn't know that he was supposed to uh, play play to Boogeyman's character. And Jim Cornette was furious, he was pissed, and they had an incident backstage which led to Jim Cornette being being banned from OVW. <laughs> Is it true that he actually yelled at Santino in front of everyone and actually slapped him in front of everybody? I don't know if it was in front of everybody because I wasn't there, but I definitely know that he, he slapped him and yelled at him. Speaking of heat, did Santino have any heat uh, after that because of the people that may have liked Jim Cornette and been on Jim Cornette? Um, I don't think he had any heat personally. I think he was very comfortable. But he handled it very well, and look where it got him today. <laughs> he ended up getting a contract out of that. Yeah. Said, so, did you have any uh, dealings with Jim Cornette directly? Directly, no. I, I do know that he was about to start using me because I was there for a lot. He's he started getting used to my face, and um, I started. He he knew who I was, and then after that, that incident, it was like I had to start from the bottom, <laughs> start from the bottom again. Um, was Al Snow around at that time? Yes, yeah, so Al Snow had a, a lot of me, a, a, a huge part of me being called up to Raw. Um, uh, we were my second time on OVW television in Kentucky. Um, I won the Southern Tag Team titles with Shad. And then um, he knew that I was hungry. He saw that I was there every week. So he gave me, he gave me an opportunity, him and Danny Davis. And um, he put a good word in for me, you know, because they before they hire, they say, how was this kid? How was his mentality? How was his training? How was his, his mindset? He put a good word in for me, so I thank Al Snow, for, thank Al Snow a lot for that. And I understand Paul Heyman was also working in uh, OVW at that time. Yes, he was. He gave me the name Neighborhoodie when I was done in OVW. Um, he's the one, I think it was his idea to put Shad and I together, because Shad had just finished running a a segment, a program with CM Punk for the title, and they didn't know what to do with Shad after that. And they decided to put, Heyman decided to put um, Shad and the Dave Hoodie together, and that, that birthed crime time. <laughs> what was that like uh, working with Heyman because he had just come off the ECW and was quite a figure? Like, oh, yeah, he was, it was, he was great to work with. He was very laid back, he was cool, he was a straight shooter. Um, Told it like it is, and his ideas were great. He was an evil genius. And you mentioned CM Punk. Did you have much contact with CM Punk in those days? Oh yeah, I, I trained with CM Punk. Um, I worked CM Punk singles when I was in OVW. Um, yeah, we set up rings together. Yeah, we, <laughs> I had a lot of interaction with CM Punk. What did you think of him as a, as a person? Um, I didn't know him personally. I know, but professionally, he was he was great. You know, he was of course he was great on the mic. He was great in the ring. Um, I learned a lot watching him, and he was he was cool. And what do you think about his uh, switch over to MMA and his recent UFC performance? I was really rooting for him, man. <laughs> I was really rooting for him. Um, I hope he got. I hope he could redeem himself with one more one more fight. You got guys like Brock Lesnar, um, Bobby Lashley does MMA. I mean, sometimes it's just not your day. <laughs> And you bring up Bobby Lashley, would he have been around OVW when you were there? Yeah, I trained with um, Bobby Lashley, set up rings with him, uh, worked out with him. Um, me and Bobby Lashley still keep in contact. He's a great dude. Have you been following his MMA career as well? No, I haven't. No. Okay. And was Cody Rhodes around OVW at that time? Same thing. Trained with him, wrestled with him, set up rings with him, uh, uh, rode on the road with him uh, during OVW independent shows, yeah. What do you think about uh, his idea of quitting uh, WWE right in the middle of his contract? I guess there was still some time left. Um, I think that was um, a good move on his part. You know, if you know, if you don't feel like you're being used, you know, follow your intuition, follow your heart. His heart wasn't in it, so I, f I definitely am a big believer in following your passion. And that was he was passionate about that, especially after his. That was when his pops just just died, so he wanted to make a name for himself. Do you agree with him that? he really hadn't been given too many opportunities in the time that he had worked for WWE? I don't know if I, if I could co-sign that. I think he'd been given a lot of opportunities. He's had a lot of characters and different um, heel changes and baby face changes. Uh, yeah, I think he had a lot of opportunity. So it was Paul Heyman that uh, ended up putting in with your partner in the end. Uh, what were your first impressions of him when you met uh, Shad? I remember the first time I met him, I was introduced to him by Elijah Burke. 
uh, the Pope. And the first time I met him, I was like, oh, this guy's a character. <laughs> I definitely thought Sharon was a character. But we, be, um, we developed a friendship before we were even in a tag team. You know, Shad, he, done so much. He, done, he has done so much for me outside the ring. He gave me my first apartment. He gave me his license when I wasn't even 21 yet. So I was going into bars. I was, what, 18, 19, <laughs> using his ID. No one questioned it. Um, he was very well known in, in the club scene because he did a lot of security. So they knew that was his, like, little, they, they said I was his little brother. And you mentioned he was in security. He also had a bit of uh, MMA background. But supposedly he had fights, I guess, possibly under the nah, I don't fights. know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also read that he was disqualified for tough, from Tough Enough 2 for some reason. Do you have any idea? Oh, yeah, he did tell me about it. He was disqualified. I think the, um, the doctor made a mistake on, on his, one of his blood tests. They made a mistake, and then um, once, once they corrected, it was already too late. <laughs> so he was like, oh, well, he didn't stop him. And I was a blessing in disguise. Everything happened for a reason. Uh, what about the crime time vignettes that you didn't know? See, OVW, those are pretty memorable. Uh, what were your thoughts on those, and did you have much say in putting those? Oh, that was all Shad and I. That was all our creativity. We shot those ourselves. We got, our cam we got a camera. Uh, we got a crew, and um, we just had fun. And because it was so good, um, WWE didn't want to change it. They just wanted to use better equipment, and we did the same exact things um, with better equipment, with WWE quality. And one girl that was in one of those vignettes was she named a, who worked uh, for our company, Great North Wrestling, quite a bit in the past. Uh, I guess she was in on contract in OVW at that time. Do you remember her? She named it. She named it. Yeah. No, I do not. She if I see her face, I probably definitely yeah. would. would she was in one of your apartment, I think the one in your apartment or something. Okay, I, I gotta see her face. So what ultimately led you guys getting called up? It was those videos. It was those vignettes that we did because they, not only was, was it the video that it was, the content that it was funny is that we took the initiative to do it on our own. Um, Al Snow said we were winning, we were the Southern Tag Team Champions, we were winning, and um, they were like, you don't always have to win a match or have matches to get over. You know, do something outside of outside of the ring. And we came up with some cool concepts and we had fun with it. And then Vince wound up seeing those vignettes and hired hired me. I, Chad was already on the contract, and I, I was able to get a contract off of that. So I was in OVW for about three and a half years with this, uh, with, with no contract, no development of contract. I was working at the Gold's Gym and balancing working, going to the gym and going to practice. Who were the talent relations people you were dealing with at that time? At the time, John, John Laurinaitis was the man. He was the man to, who, uh, who had to say over your, over your career. What did you think of him? Um, he came across very intimidating, but once you get to know him, uh, he was very cool, but he, um, He's, he's got a good head for this business. He, he sees uh, potential. And you mentioned Vince was a fan of your vignettes. What were your first impressions of Vince when you finally met him? When I finally met Vince, um, I wasn't nervous. I wasn't, a, uh, I wasn't nervous for some reason. Um, but he made some, he made some promises. <laughs> um, I, he was very excited to see us, and he was glad to have us in, on, on the roster. I remember that. He would, I could see that it was very authentic, that he was happy to have us on the roster. Because um, he saw the vignettes, and he, he saw some of our dark matches, and he was very impressed with them. And who came up with the Crime Time name? The Crime Time name, we all sat in a room and was going through different names. Um, because uh, of trademark issues, we had to make sure that it wasn't taken already, so we were just going through coming up with names, going through the computer, trademark, oh, taken, we can't use that. It was one, I'm so glad that it didn't come through, one of the writers, um, one of the head writers at the time of Raw, he wanted to call us Hoodie Nation, and we were gonna have our own flag, and I was like, oh, please let that be, <laughs> let that be taken, I don't wanna, that's a horrible name, and it was taken, so, and then all of a sudden, someone said, crime time, and then we looked at each other, and it was, crime time, crime time, crime time? Can we spell it? How does this, how is it spelled? Crime time, the original way it was taken. Then we spelled it with a Y. He's like, it's good. I like it. We all liked it. And then crime time it was. Your name, JTG, uh, I guess you still own that. How is yeah. that possible? I, d I don't know how I got away with that. When I saw it in my contract, um, uh, I always remember that. And I was like, I didn't say anything. I just kept it in the back of my head. And then when, we, when I did get released, we all got an email all the time that I got released and said to please change your Twitter handles if your stage name is in here. And I just wrote back, I was like, well, in my contract, <laughs> I own JTG. 
And then I got like a response like, oh, yes, you do. Okay, you're fine. I was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and for people that don't know, what does JTG stand for? Well, JTG, when I was in OVW, it stood for Just Too Good. When I used to do my uh, promos with Rip Rogers, I would always just say I was just too good at the end and sometime during the promo. So Just Too Good was my, uh, was my name in OVW, but when I got to WWE, because I didn't want to get heat, I didn't want to sound overconfident, um, that eventually changed to Just, uh, just That Gangster. <laughs> And you talk about he, you would have been one of the younger wrestlers for sure at the time when you de debuted in WWE. Yeah. Did you have any heat on you just for being young when you first came in? Oh, definitely. When I, when, when I came on the scene, I was 21. Um, and then we got over immediately with the WWE universe. And we got a lot of heat for that because um, guys who were there for years, you know, who were having issues, who were having, having a hard time getting over. And then Chad and I come in there two, three weeks in, the crowd is blown, we're blowing the roof off arenas when they hear yo, 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 and we're young, and you know, that, that, that did ruffle a few feathers. What are the, some ways, I know it's in your book, but like, that you can get heat, just like a couple of ways maybe, because it's very, it's very hard for someone to understand that's not in the wrestling business. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you're fresh going into that movie, the jealousy is so oh, huge yeah. and it's such a backstabbing industry. Yeah, it's, it's such a backstabbing industry. You could get heat for walking in the, the arena with shades on. That's one. You get heat for not shaking somebody's hand. You got to shake everybody's hand when you, want, when you walk into that arena. I've shaken people's hands twice or, or three times because I've forgot. There's so many people backstage that you forget who hands you shook. So I just want to make sure that I... And that's every night, four every, or five days a week. Shake every night. single person's hand. <laughs> Shake your hand. Right? Yep. Um, you get heat in catering if um, if you don't have a shirt on. Um, what if you're getting your hair braided in the hallway? If you're getting your hair braided in the hallway. Oh yeah, we got heat for that. <laughs> <laughs> was Rob Lesnar around when you guys first came in? No, he was not around. But um, when I at towards towards uh, when Brock just got back. I was there, there, and um, I remember working out with him, and um, I believe it was in Washington. He was a very, very cool guy. He gave me right back to the arena. And you worked with the Highlanders. What are your memories of that? I enjoyed working with the Highlanders because uh, we we trained with them in OVW, so there was kind of that brotherly, um, brotherly love. Um, I, I wish there was a, 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 there a lot longer because they got released not not too shortly after we. Um, we came. They worked with the world's greatest tag team. Uh, what are your memories of that? Deborah? My memories of them, they gave us, uh, they helped us tremendously because um, we worked with them so much. They they showed us, they, they helped us in and out of the ring. Like a lot of stuff that we weren't privy to, Shad and I, they had to really like get in our ear and get in our ass. Like you can't do that, don't do that, you shouldn't be doing that. And you know, just basic etiquette. Backstage stuff or is stuff in the ring? Both. What are your thoughts on Sheldon Benjamin's, re uh, Benjamin's recent injury? They were about to bring him back to WWE SmackDown and apparently they found uh, an injury and he ended up not getting the contract in the end. Oh man, so he's, that's it? Uh, maybe once he gets it, it fixed, they'll give him another shot, but for now... I hope so. I'll love to see Shelton Benjamin back in the ring. He's, he's a great talent. Now, you also worked with Jim Duggan and Super Crazy. What were those names? <laughs> those, guys, those guys are fun to, uh, definitely fun to work with. Hacksaw Jim Duggan got a ton of stories. Um, and traveling was super crazy. I didn't, it, it was, it made great stories. That's all I gotta say. And I heard an interview with Shad where he mentioned that Lance Cade was a dick and an asshole. Yeah. Uh, what exactly was the issue with you guys and Murdoch and Cade? I don't know, I guess because it was working with us. I, I think that they wanted to work with like the Hardy Boys and upper tier um, tag teams. Because I guess we were new, they didn't want to work with us. I, I didn't think. I guess it would ruin their their brand. I don't. I don't know. But they they didn't enjoy working with us at all. And then because of them, that helped. The first time we got released was because of them. And I guess they were also spreading rumors about you guys backstage. And you guys were dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. This. Yeah. And uh, going into that incident when you guys were first released, I guess you were uh, having a match with them and they changed the finish somehow? Yeah, they changed the finish on us. Um, they got the ref in on it. And, you know, grow, being coming through the coming through OVW, you know, whatever issues we have uh, personally with, with another superstar, 
you know, we were taught that you take care of it in the back. You don't ever let it spill outside the ring. So when they did that, that was like kind of like a, a big slap in the face. It's like, why would you change change the finish, do it in front of a live audience, get the referee on it, and you know, we had to. In what way did they change the finish? So we did a, we did a, a thing where I would get almost get counted out, and I roll back in at eight, like make it like a close count, and then I rolled in at eight, and then they had the ref do a fast count. So I rolled in at eight, it was like seven. Eight, nine, ten, and then even the audience picked up on it. They were like, "What the hell was that?" And they started chanting, "This is bullshit!" And then you know, and they sprinted. They they sprinted and left and went towards the back. And the referee was there, and Chad was pissed because he because he saw like the eye contact and the exchange, the body language between the ref and the tag team. He knew something was up, and Chad was really pissed, and he took it upon himself to uh, to embarrass, humiliate the ref because he was still out there. And we hit our finish on the ref. Um, and then Chad took his belt, took the rest uh, shirt and belt off and auctioned it off to the crowd because we had to get them back up. Yeah, yeah, because that's the gimmick of selling stuff to the crowd. Yeah, yeah, so that was our gimmick, so I guess it kind of, but they didn't like it in the back. We got a lot of heat for that, a lot, which really led to our demise. <laughs> yeah, what happened? I understand uh, Cena actually reprimanded you guys. Yeah, in, in, front of, of, in front of everybody, yeah. How did that work? You just lock in the back and he goes off on you? Or? Actually, um, our agent, Barry Windham, called Shad. He didn't want to um, speak to me because I didn't. It wasn't me that had the uh, problem. So he called Shad to the back. He yelled at him in the, in the locker room. Um, I remember, I remember exactly. He's like, I don't need to speak to you. I need to speak to your partner. You stay out. Stay out of this. He called Shad into the room. Yelled at him. Then when Shad got out, finished getting yelled at from Barry Windham, my agent. John Cena let him have it. Well, he let us. He, John Cena let us both have it. I was like, damn. <laughs> And then on the way back, John Laurinaitis called us, let us have it. The next day, we got released that raw. What was it like uh, getting that treatment from John Cena? You know, comes across as kind of a way back guy, I guess, if you don't know him. But yeah, I, it just threw me off. It was, it was just that day. It wasn't. A, it was. It was. It was a horrible weekend. <laughs> it was a horrible weekend. It uh, definitely threw me off. I guess you were pretty down then when uh, you found out you were released initially. Because you were so yeah, it made it worse too that I had to drive home after that because I was about I was still living in Kentucky, um, and I think Louisville was a three-hour drive. So they said they flew Shad home and said since you're only three hours away, you're gonna you could drive home. I'm like, with this news, I'm like that. <laughs> so yeah, that was the longest three-hour drive ever. Was there any punishment given to Cade Murdoch or the referee for that? Nope. Because that wouldn't fly in today's WWE. Yeah, game. not at all. But no. <laughs> and Barry Windham's no longer. No, he's no longer no longer there with the company. What did you think of him other than that situation? Did you no, he was cool. I think he was just doing his job. I, I have no issues with Barry Windham. He's a cool agent. And I guess you were uh, not employed with WWE for about six months before they brought you back. Did you do anything really in that six months? Oh, I lived my life. I had a great time. <laughs> Shad and I was paid for three months because we had that 90 days. And then we got a huge video game um, uh, check. So I did a lot of vacationing. Uh, saw some friends and family I didn't see because I was on the road. And then um, while I was in Trinidad, that's when uh, with visiting family. Um, Shaggy gave me a call and said, uh, "There's a we might be going back to going back going back up." He said, "Come get the train at Booker's. So as soon as you come back to to the states, you know, pack, stay at stay in Kentucky for about a day or two, take care of whatever you need, and then come to Houston where I, where he lived, and then we trade that Booker T's uh, for like I say about three weeks to a month, and then um, that's when we got the call back." Did you know Booker T before that? Oh yeah, I knew Booker T before that. Yeah. Um, what was it like training with Booker? Um, he wasn't there. He was only there like once or twice, but we trained with his students. Okay. Yeah, we just had to sharpen up our skills. And you actually ended up working with John Cena when you came back. How I did know. that come about? I have no idea how that came about, but um, it helped both both the tag team and helped um, John Cena at the time. Because you guys were still really popular then, and he had the rap giving so yeah. they thought, I guess, putting you guys together. And it was it was great for both it, for both. Yeah. Was there, you know, now that there's a crowd is always divided with Cena, yeah. was there that situation when you guys were teaming with him? No, that never happened. He was, he was automatically over since he was with, since he was with us. <laughs> I don't mean to brag, but it's going out of his. 
<laughs> Did you guys ever talk about uh, the past uh, when you were working together again, or was that kind of water under the bridge? That was water under the bridge. Um, it was business, and it was called CTC. Yeah, that was that was on our mind at the time. And were you doing any traveling with him at that time? Or no, we didn't do any traveling with him. No. What was he like to work with in general? He helped us out a lot. Um, he gave us a lot of um, uh, ideas and little stuff not to do um, since we were moving up, moving up to the next level. You know, we were no longer just you know just a tag team. We we're we we're now in main events. In your opinion, do you think they're ever going to change him heel? Change him heel? Yeah. Maybe uh, I think they, they are. I think they're saving it because that would be a big. The fans will love that. And what led to the end of the thing with Cena? It was just it was over. It came out of came out of nowhere. This one week we just he said we don't we don't need um, he said I don't need you this week. I'm like okay. <laughs> it ended just like that. It ended. And when you came back, uh, did you still have heat over what had happened? Oh yeah, we Chad and I definitely still had heat when we came back. Yeah. Did you still shake Trevor Murdoch's and Lance King's hand? Yeah, we had to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to suck it up. I yep. guess, in yeah. Yeah. Professional. I understand once you had a, pu a punishment match where you guys had to do a handicap match against Great Cali. Mm-hmm. That was overseas. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what was he like to work with? Um, sometimes it's very hard to understand the great Kali, um, so we kept it short and simple. Um, but you know, everything else is cool. He just he has that one chop over the head that could really to be a little stiff. Well, other than that, he's cool to work with. I worked with him multiple times. He killed somebody by accident. He did. Yes, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. When he was uh, when he was training, it was an accident. He killed him. Yeah, this was before he went to WWE. Oh wow, I did not know that. Yeah. Was it with the chop? Over no, the I believe it was some type of botched uh, power bomb. But yeah, God. It, was a, it was an accident. Oh thing. gosh. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't know that when I was working with him because that would definitely <laughs> been in my <laughs> been in the back yeah. of my head. Yeah. Because I was in deep south for a short while and I had to be pretty much his bumping down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's when I was <laughs> informed of that story. Well, you also worked with Deuce and Domino. What was that like? We worked um, we work with them once. We also we also trained with them in OVW. Um, but we worked that one match with them on SmackDown. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I like to work with them. And we also had a great segment afterwards when we stole their car. Yeah, and you took it to the Briscoe uh, uh, Chop Shop. Shop. Yeah, that was, yeah I loved, that was one of my favorite segments. What was your relationship like with Gerald Briscoe? I guess he was more of an active agent in those Yeah, days. yeah, it was cool, yeah. And you also worked with JBL. Yeah, he was cool to work with once he warmed up to me. You know, at first, uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> he wasn't so, uh, he was kind of reserved. You know, he didn't, he had to observe me first, and see where Shad and I was at, but he was cool at the end. He was known for his hazing. Did you ever witness any of his hazing on younger wrestlers? I guess you guys were pretty legitimate, tough guys, so he didn't want to mess with you guys. Yeah, he didn't really mess with us that much, no. Did you witness it with anyone else? Um, I think he gave, gave Miz a hard time. It's kind of it's kind of fuzzy, so I don't want to talk too much about it. But right. Um, what about Hardcore Holly? Have you ever witnessed anything with him? His and people. I know was, we talked to Renee Dupree, and there was a couple incidents with him and Renee. <laughs> now, I didn't see him um, talk to him. Nah, I wasn't there for for that. <laughs> but he was really cool with us. Hardcore Holly pulled us aside and gave us some good advice. Well, he gave me good advice. <laughs> I guess Renee probably could have uh, learned from your book about heat too. Yeah. In the 2009 Royal Rumble, you were eliminated by The Undertaker. Uh, what was it like? That was an honor to be eliminated by The Undertaker. I was by all 30 people, all 29 people, and I got eliminated by The Undertaker. I could tell my grandkids about that. <laughs> Did you have much contact with him backstage? With Undertaker? Yeah. Yeah, he was around. Yeah, you could ask him anything. He was real cool and laid back. Uh, why is he so respected backstage? Is just because he's been around so long? Been around so long. His professionalism, his experience. He's just a he's a he's a great locker room leader. Being part of the very first uh, WWE draft, uh, why do you think it failed? The draft? Yeah. Because they didn't stick to it. You need to be consistent. If you're going to have a, a Raw brand or SmackDown brand, you can't every other week bring SmackDown talent to Raw and then you can't do that. It, I know you don't follow the business too closely these days from what I've heard, but do you think you're doing a better job with it this time around? From what oh, with the, with the Raw and SmackDown split? Yeah. yeah, I think they're doing a better job now. Yeah, I've, I've been, I follow it a lot on social media. 
I find out the results, and yeah, they've been really consistent with the, with the split. And uh, working with John Morrison and Our Truth, what was that like? I love working with John Morrison. Um, I actually hung out with him not too long ago. We actually went to Raw, and we were in a suite, and we watched Raw. Um, and uh, he just has a new movie coming out called Boone the Bounty Hunter. He, and that, he, have you seen him on Raw? He's big into the parkour, so he does a lot of his own stunts. Um, I love working with um, Morrison. Um, did some comedy stuff with him. Um, our truth was cool to work with. He's cool and laid back. He has a lot of experience you could also pick his brain about. I heard WWE gave one of your gimmick ideas to our truth. Is, that, is there any truth to that? Yeah, I had, <laughs> I had pitched the idea to Vince. Um, about an imaginary character that eventually evolved into a Muppet and he loved the idea and then I, I don't want to give away too much but it's in the book, Dan, my first book and um, it kind of like fizzled out and then all of a sudden I saw our truth with the character. And one more thing on John Morrison, he's in Lucha Underground. Uh, have you ever considered going to Lucha Underground? I've definitely considered it. Um, uh, I don't know if that... I go back and forth though on, on the idea. Slam Master J, what did you think of being involved with him? We had some funny segments working with him. Yeah, I was kind of hesitant at first working with him, um, but as we started working with him um, much more, I was like, this, this could go somewhere. How did you guys get along with Stephanie McMahon? Oh, Stephanie loved, loved Crime Time. Um, Vince loved Crime Time, Stephanie loved Crime Time. I enjoyed working with Stephanie because she was very hands on with some of our. Um, Backstage segments. I've heard you've been quoted as saying that uh, Triple H is more difficult to talk to backstage than Vince McMahon. Yeah. Uh, can you explain that to us? I'll, uh, what I mean by that is like Vince always has his door open. If you have an idea, suggestion, um, if you want to talk to him about something, you know his door is always open. Or door, if, he, if he's busy, you know he's saying just come come back later. With Hunter, it, look, it feels like from my own experience, like he was avoiding me. I heard you tell a story, it's pretty funny, uh, about Triple H commenting Shad on his suit. <laughs> complimenting him and yeah. Shad gave a pretty funny uh, response. Yeah. He had, I think he was, he was nervous, he didn't know what to say, and his filter it wasn't working, <laughs> wasn't working that day. Why do you think uh, the split happened so fast with you guys and there was kind of no real reason given behind it and, and the feud ended quickly? Because I think at the time the tag team division was kind of dwindling. Um, there was nobody else for us to work, and I think we both wanted it. We both wanted to see where we could go as individuals. How many matches exactly did you guys have after the split? I think we only had two matches against each other, and that was it. Was there ever any consideration prior to the split of you guys getting the tag team titles? Yeah, on a few occasions, I think we were supposed to get um, get, this, get the titles, and because of heat and politics, we, didn't, we never got it. <laughs> And they sent Chad back to FCW. Uh, I guess that's kind of in some ways considered a demotion. Yeah. Uh, what was the reason for that? Because that is it definitely had to be heat. Definitely. I guess what were your goals after the split? My goal was definitely to account, to get a, a, a singles title. You know, I always had my eye on the Intercontinental title. Um, but after the split, you know, I had to I had a difficulty trying to get that singles character. I was, I was still trying to find my, 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 my balance. How important are politics and professional wrestling behind the scenes? I think it's, it's about 60 or 70 percent of your career. You know, you know talent, if, you, if, you're, if you're all right in the ring, but if you're a great politician backstage, you can get very far. And why, why would you say wrestling is such a cutthroat business compared to other sports? Um, because that is because it's scripted and it's not based on actual talent. <laughs> that's why I think it's very cutthroat because you have, you have to know somebody or it's be being somebody's good good um that's the word I'm looking for good graces. Yeah. We've heard a lot. I've heard a lot of stories and books and so forth that Mick Foley used to be a bit of a suck up to the writers. Uh, did you ever <laughs> notice anyone else? Backstage that used to suck up a lot to the suck up to a lot of the writers. No, I know I definitely didn't do it. Um, I, maybe I should have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's such a thing as stooges in pro wrestling. Can you explain to uh, <laughs> the more common fan, I guess, what a stooge is? So a stooge is. I should have put that in my book. I'll probably put it in my next one. Write that down. A stooge. A stooge is someone who's pretty much 
tells on other wrestlers to get themselves over. You know, let's say they're not doing too well. They're trying to get, um, they have heat or maybe they want to raise up in the rankings. You know, they tell on other wrestlers, you know, they get in good graces with, with the office. Uh, would you like to tell us any examples of uh, stooges that you've witnessed? Oh, they have, they have their paid stooges. Um, We've heard Nova was a stooge from a couple other people. Oh. <laughs> um, I believe, uh, I think Brooklyn Brawler was a stooge. I'm not 100% sure, but it was, I think, wasn't it in Bret Hart's book too? That, um, yeah, Bret yeah. Hart mentioned a few yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Brooklyn Brawler, I guess you had the first match ever at the Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Yeah, that was an honor. I didn't, that's something that I did never um, thought I would accomplish. But yeah, me and David Otunga was the first match Yeah, at the pay-per-view. Is that a place where you would have considered yourself one of the most over places where you worked when you were uh, doing the tours with WWE? Brooklyn? Um, Just because of their crime time being there? Yeah, I think if we definitely go back, if you ever were to go back, it'd have to be at the bar because <laughs> to blow the roof off. Do you think you ever will go back? I don't know. You're so pretty young. After You're those so two cool. books, I don't know. <laughs> Well, that's the thing about the two books. I noticed that people said you're worried about uh, getting heat and not getting hired, but it's like, you don't have a job. So yeah. they, they might never give you a job anyway, so. Exactly. Uh, and you've had numerous different managers uh, in WWE, including some of the divas. divas. Yeah. Uh, which was your favorite diva to work with as a manager? Um, Candice Michelle was very cool to work with. Uh, who was we were with Kelly Kelly. Yeah. Um, Candice Michelle, she's very cool because she was very. She wanted to be. She wanted to be urban so bad, so that made it even more fun. <laughs> and what about Alicia Fox? Oh yeah, I think, um, that didn't last too long. I think we she, she probably did like two or three matches with me. Also had Tamina. That didn't last too long. That was on NXT. What's she like as a person? Tamina's very cool, laid back backstage. Were you a fan of her father at all, bro? Oh, Jimmy Snuka, definitely. Yeah, I was a big fan of Jimmy Fox, um Snuka. And Eve Torres, what did you do to her? Oh yeah, Eve. Yeah, we worked with Eve. She was very cool to work with also. I almost forgot about that. She was fun to do. Um, we did work up with her also. And you were actually a manager yourself. What did you think of that? Oh so, yeah, so. I, didn't, I didn't enjoy that at all. I was, I was bigger than some of the guys I was managing, so it didn't make, it didn't make sense. What's the difference between having TV matches and house show matches in WWE? Well, TV matches, you, you are very... Um, it's timed. You have to be on cue. Uh, you have to watch out for your camera angles. And with house, house shows, you know, you can have fun. You don't have to worry about camera angles. You don't have to worry about looking for the camera or your, or your referee giving you cues. You just go out there, have fun. You, sometimes you even call stuff out there on the fly and just have fun with the audience. And did you ever have any matches with Dean Ambrose? Yes, I did work with Dean Ambrose uh, a few times. and. Um, we had, a, we, had, we had some good matches. Yeah, we had dark, dark matches. We, we, so I enjoy working with him. Are you surprised that uh, he's been given the push as much as he has? I'm definitely surprised. That, <laughs> um, when I first saw him, you know, he wasn't that muscular. Um, he was kind of quiet, laid back, had that more methodical demeanor. Um, I definitely, I know I, I saw potential in him, but I didn't see, I didn't see um, him ever being WWE champion. And you, I guess, weren't working for WWE for almost a year, maybe a year before your release. Yeah. Um, what was your, going on in your head during that time when I guess they weren't using you and you had uh, people actually counting down to you? I know. On the internet? <laughs> well, I was home for yeah, I was home for about a uh, for a year before they um, before they released me. Um, I was thinking about what, what what's next. That's what pretty much what I was thinking about. I was trying to do stuff. I was in LA, so I was trying to take advantage of the environment that I was in. And um, at the back of my head, I, I love wrestling, but I was kind of like burned burned out because I was so disappointed every time I pitched the idea, or um, just got get this, this very dis, dis, disappointed. And then after seeing what they did to Zack Ryder, you know, I could I wanted to take the similar step with what Zack Ryder did, but. Your own YouTube show or something. Yeah, something like that, but I didn't, it didn't work out for him, so I. <laughs> so it was well, very discouraging. Still got a job, so now I guess uh, all these years later. But, yeah. Um, you worked with the Usos a bit too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I enjoyed working with the Usos because yeah, we're just we're boys outside of the ring. So when we get together for a match, there's no egos. We're just there. We just want to make make we want all, everybody in that match to look good. 
And I read that Shad was somehow arrested for jaywalking in 2011. Oh yeah. How did he, how did he get arrested for jaywalking? That was at the Arnold's, I believe. Um, I have Shad, he finds himself in very weird, peculiar incident, <laughs> incidences. And uh, more recently, he actually stopped an armed robbery. Yeah. Because that got a lot of publicity. Yeah, that was on my, on my birthday. We had a show in, um, in Florida. Um, we stopped at a gas station. Oh, you were there for that? Yeah, I was there for that, yeah. He's like, you want to get something to drink? And I'm like, yeah, just give me a Red Bull or whatever. Not a Red Bull, something to drink. Yeah, and then um, he comes back outside and he's like beating up this guy. I'm like, what did this guy do? Did he step on Shad's shoe or something like that? Or, I thought, I automatically I thought it was Shad's fault. But as I got closer to the um, altercation, I saw that there was a, there, I saw a gun on the ground. I'm like, oh shoot, what's going on here? Did you grab the gun or anything? I, like, I kicked the gun away. Like, yo, Shad, what's happening? He tried to rob the store. And I'm like, oh shoot. And then I called the police and the police came. And then Shad and I immediately put our hands up, like, look, he's the guy who robbed. <laughs> and we didn't want to make, the, had to make sure there was any uh, mistakes. Did you guys have to come back and testify in the court? Yeah, we were there for about an hour. No, we didn't, we, I don't think we had to go back and do any of that. But I know we were, we were stuck at the gas station for about an hour because he had to do a written report. Are you surprised at the amount of publicity that that, that got? Um, I thought it could have got more publicity. I thought so. I guess maybe if you guys still had your contracts, yeah, bro. maybe you should have gotten your contracts <laughs> because of that. But, uh, and you worked with Brutus Clay a bit. What did you think of him? He was cool to work with, but um, he was—he didn't like his character, and I, I could—and I felt it. Yeah, he didn't. He, he was—he he, wanted—he Brutus Clay wanted to be Brutus Clay. He didn't want to be the the Funka Funka Docto dinosaur or whatever it was. But they—they—they they, um, they wanted him to be the. Funko Docto. And you worked with William Regal as well. What was that like? I worked with him at NXT. He he um, he was he was we called everything in the ring with him. He didn't like calling anything in the back. So that was that that also helped me a lot with being more confident with calling stuff and calling stuff on a fly on TV. <laughs> Valdemir Kozlov, I worked with him a few times. He's yes. quite an interesting guy. What did you think of working with I him? I enjoyed working with um with Vlad Vladimir because we were also cool outside the ring and travel buddies. We shared cars together. Um, hotel rooms. Um, I still keep in contact with him. He's doing his thing right now in Hollywood on, on the silver screen. Yeah, he's in uh, John Wick too. Yeah, he's staying busy. Things. Yeah, he's doing great. Uh, I know Shad's done a lot of uh, acting. Have you mm -hmm. considered it or have you? Oh yeah, much? I'm actually shooting something um, March 24th. Uh, I can't talk too much about the character, but yeah, I'm doing my thing also. It's Building my resume. <laughs> and I understand you were close behind the scenes with Chris Jericho. Yeah, he was very cool to work. Cool with inside and outside the ring. Yeah, yeah. he just helped you out a lot. Yeah. One of his guys that he's been working with on camera lately is Kevin Owens. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised, like, you, when you were signed, like, the body was very important and the look was very yeah. important and now, Luckily, the belt's off of him now, but basically the company <laughs> representative was uh -huh. a chubby-looking guy. So it's changed from when you were... Yeah, definitely changed, changed, yeah. What do you think of uh, them bringing Goldberg back and uh, the push and the success that Goldberg's had? Uh, too much in so little time. You know, I understand that he's a fan favorite, but I guess they're, gonna, they're doing it just for WrestleMania. Yeah. yeah. And we just brought up Kevin Owens. I guess they had uh, a match that a lot of fans complained about. Yeah, um, for them to do it in a couple of seconds, that's... Uh, I feel bad for Kevin Owens. <laughs> what about Ryback? Did you have much contact with him? Oh yeah, train with him, set up rings with him. Um, I stay, I stay in contact with him. I love Ryback, very cool, laid back individual. Me and him will talk about the secret <laughs> in, the, in catering, yeah. Are you surprised that he quit WWE? I guess I'm not, not. surprised. You no, know, I, I definitely saw a lot of potential in uh, Ryback. I definitely saw, thought, believed that he could, he should have been actually um, WWE champion. But again, he. <laughs> you mentioned you brought up uh, Lucha Underground. Uh, do you think you could ever see yourself in TNA or Ring of Honor? I definitely could see that potentially happen. You know, we gotta make sure those numbers are right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you're what, 32 or 33? 32. Okay, so yeah. you still could have a good 10 years ahead of you. Yeah, we'll see. See how Hollywood treats me. Yeah. <laughs> Hollywood's a lot easier than... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what made you write your first book? 
Um, what made me write my first book was um, Friends and Family. I had I never thought in a million years that I would write a book, um, but I had some great stories, and I and I could tell a good story, and I have a different style of telling my story. Um, if you read if you read my book, you can tell that I have a very interesting way of telling my my story, my writing style, and I just had fun with it. And um, the wrestling fans are very cutthroat, so they're going to be harsh critics. So that first first time, the first book I put out, um, they loved it. It was considered a cult classic, like the first week. Um, they were, everybody was recommending the book, and then that inspired me to write the second one. And both of them have had good feedback from the fans. Definitely, yeah. yeah. They led me to do the audio book. Um, I had some interviews talking about doing, uh, turning the stories into live plays. You know, it was like so many different ideas, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> and is there anything else that the future might hold for you other than uh, acting? And acting, um, I'm working on a few other projects. I'm launching an app hopefully by this summer. We get these bugs out the way. But yeah, I'm just staying, staying busy, man, using my imagination and imagination and letting it run wild. And are you married or anything? No, right now I'm separated. Yeah. Yeah, kid, yeah, I have a daughter, a beautiful daughter, yeah. Six year old. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So I guess it's been good in a way that you've been home with your daughter. And yeah, I've been, been home. Been, yeah. That's good. And where can we follow you for the fans watching this? You could follow, on Twitter, you can follow me at JTG1284, Instagram, JTG121084. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. And finally, is there uh, is there any message you want to say to your, your fans? I know you still got a lot of fans out there judging by how popular your book is. <laughs> <laughs> to all the fans out there who haven't read the book, make sure you get the book. It's on Amazon. It's on Google Play. Um, you can find it on iTunes, the audio book. The audio book, you will love it. It's narrated, narrated by myself. Um, follow me on Twitter, Instagram. I'm a great storyteller. You guys will have fun. You'll enjoy the ride. All right, thanks a lot and good luck in your match tonight. Thank you, man. We're going to get the blue roof off tonight.